All right, hello YouTubers. It's me. It's Dark Poet. It's been about a month since I've done a video. <clears throat> Life's been a little hectic, and I felt we're long overdue for a video. And I've been seeing a lot of things on YouTube by other YouTubers like Alex Becker, uh, Mahler, pertaining to to me to be one of the best movie franchises of all time. Yeah, you probably figured it out. Star Wars. And I'm going to have my own little say about the recent movies compared to the originals. As they call OT. The original trilogy. Um, but on a, a little note, today is uh, Veterans Day. And I am a veteran. You're welcome. Uh, thank you to everyone out there that supports our troops. I don't care if you don't support the war, if there's still a war going on, troops over in Iraq or whatever. Um, you know, that's a personal preference to not support the war. Who wants a war? No one wants a war. Sadly, though, war has a way of boosting our economy, which really sucks. But I appreciate it if you at least support the troops, because these men and women go out there every day and put their lives on the line to protect the freedoms that you enjoy and to some people out there you probably know who you are you take advantage of those freedoms to belittle to slander and make a mockery out of the armed forces if it wasn't for us your sorry little ass wouldn't be safe sleeping in your own home at night you know, there are certain establishments over the years that I've quit going to, that I've quit spending money at because of their attitudes and the things they say. I'm not going to get into that because that may be for a video sometime in the future. But I just wanted to thank everybody out there that supports our troops, those men and women that do this for us to guarantee our freedom. Of course, there's a... Uh, there's a lot of other things going on. You know, the government, I love my country. The government, I think it needs to be fixed, but again, I'm not going to get into that here. All right, so let's talk about Star Wars. I'm going to drop some things on you that you may or may not know, depending on how old you are and when you got into Star Wars. When the very first movie came out in 1977, I was 10 years old. So I've been a Star Wars fan since 1977. Um, there were a lot of things that were done during that, food, that very first movie that set the bar for every science fiction film to follow it. During the course of the movie, they had to invent on the fly a lot of the technology that they had to use in order to get the image in their mind up on the screen. Because uh, those technologies back then hadn't been invented. So they were doing this stuff on the fly. Thinking it out, working it out, getting it done so they could produce the best vision of what George Lucas had in mind. Granted, there are a lot of people that weren't too happy with the special edition on DVD, and then ultimately the Blu-ray edition where he's added additional footage, and uh, or he once again redid the audio. I mean, Star Wars has been released so many times over the years. Uh, I think the first re-release I ever saw was they had redone the audio. And I think ultimately when the DVD and then the Blu-ray releases came out, it was because people were looking back at the original film, the actual celluloid film, telling Lucas, if you want to do something with this to preserve it, you need to do it now because the, the original master is deteriorating. And if you don't do something, it's going to be gone forever. So, boom. The special edition DVD came out, and eventually the Blu-ray, and people don't like them. 
But from what I understand on the Blu-rays, they do include the original releases of the movies without all the changes. For those of you that want to be complete purists, I like the Blu-ray version because as Lucas had stated, he says you never finish a film, you only abandon it. So what he wanted to do was get the vision he had for each of those first three movies on the screen. Back in 1977, 1980, and even 1983, the technology didn't exist to allow him to get his imagination and what he had in mind on that screen until the 90s. So, yeah, that's, that's basically pretty much it in a nutshell about the special editions and the Blu-ray. I like them all. I like all the versions. I don't care which one I watch, the original unedited one or the Blu-ray. I don't care. I'm a Star Wars fan. It's about the movie. It's about the escapism. It's about the entertainment. And as long as it doesn't detract from those things, I'm happy as a pig in a mud pen. So, another thing that came about back then, now, take in mind, this is 1977, and it was either Mattel or Kenner. The toy manufacturers, who, unknown to some people, also manufactured military weapons. Don't believe me? Go check it out. Kenner. I think it was either Kenner or Mattel. One of the two, or both of them, actually made weapons for the military, in addition to all these toys that were all over the place. But anyway, <clears throat> back in 1977, when the movie first came out, it was simply titled Star Wars. There was no episode four, A New Hope. It was just Star Wars. Because George knew if this movie did not do well, he wasn't going to do another one. But the movie took off beyond his own expectations. So by the time Empire Strikes Back came out, the episode number started to appear on the movies. Um, I don't know if it was... I don't know how soon Star Wars became episode four, A New Hope. But I think most of us already knew he's starting in the middle of a larger story. Because he felt the first three, what he had in mind, definitely could not be done back then. So he's pretty much basically started in the middle of the story with Luke and working him through. But during this time, Mattel and Kenner, I guess, were approached to do an action figure toy line for the Star Wars movies. And in the greatest, I guess you could call it a Ponzi scheme, though it wasn't actually a Ponzi scheme at the end, the toy manufacturers actually did not have the toys produced when the movie was released. So instead, when a customer came into the store to buy, say, oh, I want to get that Luke Skywalker, that Luke Skywalker action figure over there, they bought an empty box. And they were told to hold on to the box and your seat when the toy is available we'll let you know you can come back into the store with your box and the receipt and we'll give you the toy that you purchased so I guess you could pretty much say that this was the granddaddy to what we now know as a pre-order because they sold hundreds if not thousands of empty boxes with the promise to supply the toy when it became available and it did pay off people did buy these empty boxes the toys did come in and Star Wars just took off and became the big global monster it is today um, and then George started tweaking those original movies in preparation to do episode 1, 2, and 3 not many people like episode 1 a lot of people don't like Jar Jar Binks. But compared to the shit that they're putting out now, that movie's a fucking masterpiece. Just saying. Um, two is kind of slow until it gets halfway through, and then it just picks up. And then, of course, three, the darkest movie George has ever done. It is the only movie in the Star Wars series that he's done that does not have a PG rating because it was so dark. But yet, it fulfilled 
our basic desire and or need to know how did Anakin go to the dark side? When did he become the Sith Lord Darth Vader? There you go. It was a beautifully constructed film. The story is what you need to pay attention to. I know episode one sucks. It's really slow. But it's setting up the entire story. And you get to watch Palpatine play all these chumps like a puppet master. Got his own agenda. He's hiding right slap in the middle of Jedi Central. And nobody's the wiser. And the whole time, he's playing on Anakin. Yeah, he's got his little Darth Mauls and his Count Dooku's and Oh, I'm sorry, Darth Tyrannus. Uh, but he was in this for the long game, and Anakin was the goal. And if you look at episodes 1 through 3 and then 4 through 6, you need to come to realize that when they were talking about uh, the prophecy, he's the, the Chosen One will bring balance to the Force. Mace Windu said that, you know, Qui-Gon felt that Anakin was the chosen one, that he was the prophecy. But actually, he wasn't. It was actually Luke was the chosen one who ultimately did defeat his father, redeemed his father, and brought balance to the Force. They just kind of picked the wrong chosen one, is, is all. <laughs> um, but the storytelling... The politics in those first three movies sets up how the Empire comes into existence, how he's able to manipulate and get the power that he needed to become the Emperor. I love these movies. I don't care how crappy people think 1, 2, and 3 might be. I'm pretty sure 3 is high on people's lists as a very good movie because you finally get to see the story about Darth Vader coming to be. But 1 and 2... <laughs> But they were needed in order to set everything up, to build it up, to see everything that Anakin goes through, and to realize later on when you watch the movies that Luke is probably the strongest Jedi out there. Because if you look at Anakin, he was with his mom. He was 10 years old when Qui-Gon Jinn discovered him. But he'd had that 10 years with his mom. The emotions were there. It created complications during his training. He kept seeing all these visions. His mother dies in his arms. He murders an entire village of sand people. And then he sees future visions of Padme dying. Having no clue that it was his journey down this path to save her that was ultimately killing her because he was going to the dark side. He was going to play with the dark side to find a way to keep Padme from dying. Or, or to bring her back with the help of Palpatine. And that's what killed her. And he had no clue that he was actually killing her. Um, it's, it's a beautiful story. And you see the turmoil. Uh, maybe some of the acting could have been a lot better. But I think it got the point across. Now, you take a look at Luke Skywalker. He was with family from the time he was an infant until he was about 20 when he came across Obi-Wan Kenobi. And, of course, Obi-Wan Kenobi was the one that delivered Luke to Uncle Ben and Aunt Baru. So, it was a family thing, and Obi-Wan stayed on Tatooine to keep his eyes on young Luke. So he's 20 years old when he starts getting the basic training from Obi-Wan. And it goes through this whole story arc over those three films. So you need to look at Anakin and Luke, and you realize Luke had a longer emotional tie to a family than Anakin did. But he managed to resist the dark side, even though he'd lost so much. He lost his family. Aunt Beru, they, they were all killed. Because they were looking for some damn droids. Who's got the fucking Death Star plans? And it's just, yeah, it's just... Mm. But you, you just take all six of those movies in, you see the big picture. As far as I'm concerned, Star Wars movies are done. Luke Skywalker saved the galaxy. They brought down the Empire. Put a stamp on it. Call her done. Yeah, I wanted to see some sequels that continued on. <clears throat> but I'm, think, I'm thinking I'm more interested in knowing what happened with Luke. What did he learn? 
Because you get to The Force Awakens, and that movie actually built up my hopes, got me real excited. Oh, hell yeah. And then The Last Jedi came out and totally fucking destroyed any hope that The Force Awakens had of reviving this franchise. Ryan Johnson's a piece of shit, in my opinion, who couldn't direct his way out of a wet paper bag. And then all the fans getting angry at this movie. And then Kathleen Kennedy stepping up saying, oh, we don't care about the male fans. And I was reading comments on other YouTube videos and somebody said, well, you know what? There goes 50, 30 to 50% of your revenue right there by saying stupid shit like that. We don't care about the male fans. I don't care if she's a feminist. I don't care if she loaded her entire movie with fucking women because that was her viewpoint long as they're strong characters. I don't give a damn about the actors that portray these characters. The characters are what matter. The story is what matters. And by the time you get to The Last Jedi, there is no story. There's no character development. You've got Rey, who right out of the gate can kick Luke Skywalker's ass. Oh, and Kylo Ren's ass too at that. Even though she's had no training whatsoever, never laid her hands on a fucking lightsaber, but she can still beat everybody's ass because they call this a Mary Sue. Luke suffered. He went through the trial and error. He lost everything on his journey. Rey hasn't lost shit. You see her in The Force Awakens. Oh, I'm staying here on Jakku because my parents said they'll come. You never knew your parents, bitch. You were left there as a fucking a little itty bitty kid. You don't even know your damn parents. Why the hell are you sticking around? There's several videos out there where somebody does a very analytical and very complete review of The Last Jedi. But he also goes into The Force Awakens and points out all these various things that have been set up in the previous Star Wars movies that these Star Wars movies that are currently out completely and utterly ignore. You're ignoring the source. You're ignoring everything that was set up in the previous movies to tell your story the way you want to tell it. Okay? Star Wars is not something to fuck with. I don't give a fuck about your story. Now, if your story follows some continuity with the original movies and things carry over and you see the effects of what happened in the, the previous films, in the current films, there's tie-ins, I mean, did they all slip at the office and say, now I already knew it and everybody knew for years, Harrison Ford expected his character Han Solo to die in the first Star Wars movie. <laughs> that didn't happen. I do believe Harrison Ford did not really like the character of Han Solo. But he did such a damn good job of it. But he finally got his wish in Episode 7 and he was killed off. Okay, I can probably understand that. I mean, that little story arc there with Kylo Ren, or Ben Solo, going to the dark side, and Luke running off because he failed to train his nephew properly, whatever, going into hiding for like the 30, last 30 some odd years. I mean, you've got to bring in the, the video games as well, because Luke went off and reestablished a Jedi temple and brought in all the force sensitives he could find to train them. How is it that one individual becomes a rotten apple and he runs off and hides like Yoda did on Dagobah? Why? That is not Luke. That's, that, that's not his moral. That's, no, he would never run. I mean, come on, he defeated the most awesome bad guy in cinematic history, who also happened to be his freaking dad, and managed to redeem him. And he's going to run? <clears throat> Where the hell did Snoke come from anyway? How did he get his fingers into, into Ben? How did all that happen? They don't explain none of this. They just throw it out there at you, boom, this is how it is. No explanations will you receive here. Just take it as it is. 
Okay, like I said, the Force Awakens kind of got me going. Oh, God. <coughs> got me ramped up. And then, of course, you know, Ryan Johnson's debacle completely destroyed everything. <clears throat> the only movie so far that I really enjoyed, even though I think there are some inconsistencies in it as well, is Rogue One. Which kind of bridges the gap between Episode 3 and Episode 4. Because you get to see a real good scene of a badass Darth Vader fucking some shit up. Because he's fucking evil as fuck. That's the point. What do they give us to replace Darth Vader? Kylo Ren. A whiny, snivelly, entitled brat. All he does is run around and destroy shit. I mean, that very first scene where they're on Jakku and he captures Poe Dameron, you got the impression that this was a son of a bitch that was going to fuck shit up. You know, they shoot a laser at him. He puts his hand out and just stops the laser beam in midair. And it stays there until he freaking gets back on his shuttlecraft to leave the planet. Then it takes off again. That's how powerful they build up Kylo from the get-go. Boom. Because he was trained by Luke. And then shit goes bad and he winds up being trained by Snoke. But then after that scene, he's just a whiny, whiny, snivelly brat. What the fuck? He's a puss. Especially if he got Rey, who doesn't know shit, coming and kicking his ass. What the hell? And then she beats Luke too? In a mock lightsaber duel? I don't think so. He beat Darth Vader. He redeemed his dad. This little upstart ain't going to beat nobody. She's had nothing. No training. She's lost nothing. She's earned nothing. Luke had an entire three movie story arc to go from being this moisture farmer to being a Jedi Knight. He had the training from Obi-Wan. He had the training from Yoda. And he fulfilled it. You know, he returned in the last movie to complete that training from Yoda, but of course, Yoda passed away, became one with the Force, and that was it. Of course, I don't ever think he was actually truly a Jedi, because when he said that, you get this little chuckle out of Yoda. <laughs> and it's... It was just good storytelling. Good character development, which is completely and utterly lacking. Because everything J.J. Abrams attempted to build up in that first movie, Ryan Johnson just ripped that shit up and destroyed it. Killed off fucking Luke. Which, someone did give a really good explanation, which is also what I'm thinking along the lines, is he did this massive force power, known as force projection, while he was on this island in this remote planet somewhere beyond the outer rim and he force projects himself to crate just so that he can buy the resistance some time so they can get the fuck out of there and if you've seen the movie you, you should know his lightsaber never makes a sound he does talk but Kylo Ren's lightsaber never ever touches him. And I got a feeling that if he'd actually physically been there, it would have been the same thing. I seriously doubt Kylo Ren would have ever touched him. I think Luke would have beat the dog shit out of him. But they think that because of this massive expenditure of force, because this was ability that not even Yoda had, that, you know, he expended this amount of force to project himself onto another planet far, far away. <laughs> that it was too much. It was it was a great toll that it was exacted upon him physically and once the, he let the projection go he just disappeared and became one with the force. Which I can understand that but up until that point to me that was not Luke Skywalker. Running and hiding and then he's like uh, when Ray shows up he tells her to go away he just wants to die Okay, so why the fuck did you leave a map in the first movie for everybody to fucking find you if you didn't want to be found and just die on this remote piece of shit island on this fucking stinky planet? What the fuck? Inconsistency. If that's what Luke wanted to do, there would have been no map. 
to find him. Anywhere. They would have never found him. So, yeah. And another thing, as a, as a further note, another reason why the first six movies did so well, Kathleen Kennedy had nothing to fucking do with any of those fucking first movies. None. So her feminist bullshit is not in those movies. I don't care if you're a feminist. That's your right. I defended your right for you to have your views. You want to be a feminist? Be my guest. But keep it the fuck out of the goddamn movie. You want to talk about your politics? Okay, make a fucking vlog. Keep it the fuck out of the movie. Because to get your messages and your points across, you sacrificed the character development. You made Hux look like a bumbling fucking idiot. You made Kylo Ren look like a snivelly little brat. You turned Kai, uh, you turned Ray into a Mary Sue. I have no problem with a strong female character, but she has no character development. She didn't earn what she's fucking doing. It's a piece of shit movie. So, yeah, I, as far as I'm concerned, episode one through six, with Rogue One slapped in the middle is about all I'm going to worry about. Because I think Rogue One was pretty good. I mean, they did an excellent job with uh, Grand Moff Tarkin. Bringing Peter Cushing back. That was unbelievable. And Carrie Fisher was just a little bit off on the CGI. But you knew who it was. You knew who it was supposed to be. You know. And here's another thing about Rogue... The, the only thing about Rogue One that I may have a gripe with it at all... Okay, so this is the story about where they get the Death Star plans and get them back to the Alliance so they can destroy the Death Star. Okay, if we go canon, this Jin character wasn't it. When they came out with, uh, when they started talking about Rogue One and this is the movie where they actually get the plans to the Death Star, I was going, damn, I'm going to get to see Kyle Katarn on the screen. But no, there was some girl named Jen. No cock turn. And this is based off the video games. Star Wars Dark Forces. Kyle Katarn gets the Death Star plans. And then you've got uh, uh, Dark Forces Jedi Knight where Kyle Katarn becomes a Jedi who is trained by Luke. And then you got Jedi Outcast with Kyle Katarn as the pivotal lead character in the games. But yet, he's not even mentioned in Rogue One at all. No, nothing's given to that. So yeah, I was kind of disappointed in the fact that Kyle Katarn did not get his silver screen debut. Instead, they gave it to some character named Jen. Which is fine. Nobody in this movie had superpowers. Nobody was a Jedi. They were just ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances doing what needed to be done. It was a, still a good piece of storytelling. There was some character development. So, I like it. But my hopes have been dashed with the latest movies and uh, the fans giving backlash on how awful they thought it was and this isn't Luke. And then Kathleen Kennedy and all her cronies... And Disney coming out saying, if you didn't like The Last Jedi, then you must hate women. And, oh, we don't care about the male fans. And, I mean, they're totally, de you know, you, no. That's like franchise suicide. You don't insult the fans. Because it's the fans that make a franchise what it is. That's why the original trilogy is so loved by so many. And the fans made that movie what it is. I mean, come on. It was put in the National Library of Film for being culturally and ethnically and aesthetically significant. And Star Wars was the only movie that went into that registry that was picked from the 1970s. No other movie was picked. Empire Strikes Back in 2010 also got put into that National Congressional Library of Film 
register. I, I don't remember the exact title of it, but it is an honor to be put in there. The Return of the Jedi did not see that same fanfare, but the first two movies, yeah. So, George had a vision. He, he did his vision. Yeah, there's politics in the movie, but they are the politics of the movie, of the, the central characters, the tyranny of the Empire, the fall of the Republic. And so, you know, politics to some degree is necessary to tell the story, but it's not someone's viewpoint on politics. It's the politics that made the Empire the monster that it became before Luke brought it all down. So, yeah, the new movies have got a long way to go. I don't think you can really save it. Some people have offered some ideas about the resurrection of Skywalker and and J.J. Abrams has taken over. And it's like, you know what? J.J. Abrams did a decent start with the first sequel. And then Ryan just kind of totally destroyed it. Good job. You should get, a, get an award for that one. How to destroy a beloved movie franchise in just one film there's your award fuck off and die do us all a fucking favor you're not that important you're not that fucking awesome get off your fucking high horse before someone kicks it out from under you go learn how to fucking direct a film which means you gotta go back to high school and start in drama class because you need to learn about character development and storytelling before you ever jump into what you call directing and I'm just an average joke and I think you suck because I've been a fan since I was 10 years old. And I'm probably fucking older than you, too. And I can guarantee I can probably write a better story than you could ever, ever hope to come up with for Star Wars. Based on the 30 plus years that I've been a fan of the series or franchise. So anyway, I just wanted to shed a little light on my perspective on what's going on now, what happened back then, the things they did back then that were kind of seat of the pants kind of thing, you know, oh, we want to sell toys, but we don't have any, just sell them the empty boxes, but it paid off. Star Wars succeeded, boom. And again, I'm going to say this, Kathleen Kennedy, your name was not on any of those fucking films. All of you, J.J. Abrams, Kathleen Kennedy, Ryan Johnson, y'all need to sit back and watch those movies first. Understand the lore, the canon, and stay true to it. Not put out this piece of shit drivel you're putting out. Because no one's going to buy it. No one. Han Solo bombed at the box office. There's your first sign, dumbass. Fix it. Fix it. Or Star Wars is going to bleed you all into non-existence. You spent $4 billion for it, and you're pissing it right down the drain pretty fucking stupid from a business perspective but until the next video everybody peace